Hello there and uh, welcome back to the fifth part in this uh, series. So uh, in the previous videos uh, we were uh, more uh, focused uh, on uh, creating some animations. So as you can see we have implemented uh, all the necessary animations in our uh, home fragment. So now when we click this uh, generate you will see this uh, beautiful animation and after that you will see also this uh, transition animation. And uh, there is uh, just one uh, small problem. So as you can see uh, when we get back from our success fragment to our home fragment and when we click this uh, autocomplete text view uh, we are not going to be able to see all items instead uh, we're going to see only this uh, one item and uh, to fix that uh, we need to override the on resume method and we need to put this uh, uh, three lines of code inside that uh, method so let me uh, select all of that and click uh, ctrl x to cut that and now on the top here i want to override uh, on resume method and here i want to basically pass those uh, three lines of code and now let's run our app to see if that uh, problem will fix. Okay, so now as you can see we have all three items here. So click generate. And now uh, when we get back from our success fragment to our home fragment, then uh, everything should work just fine. So let's get back and uh, click here. So now as you can see, we can see all those three items, okay? And now our code uh, works uh, perfectly fine. So uh, next, uh, in this video, we're going to actually start and uh, implement the logic needed for us to actually hash a plain text uh, using some of the algorithms uh, which we have specified right here. And uh, for that first, uh, I'm going to create a new function right here. So uh, I'm going to create a function here on uh, generate clicked. So I'm going to cut uh, all of this uh, code from our uh, on click listener here and I'm going to paste that code uh, inside this new uh, on generate clicked function, okay? So uh, now inside this function I need to check if our uh, plain text uh, edit text is empty or not. So here I'm going to check uh, if uh, binding dot uh, plain text text is empty and here I want to add a uh, else block. So if our uh, edit text named the plain text is not empty then we can call this uh, apply animations function and uh, navigate to success. So let's cut that and paste that right here inside. And if our plain text uh, is actually empty, uh, then we want to simply uh, display a snack bar message. So at the bottom of our uh, fragment, I'm going to create a function for that. So private fun show snack bar. So this function will take uh, one parameter and that is a message of a type uh, string. Okay, and inside I'm going to create a new variable named uh, snack bar and I'm going to call a uh, snack bar and it's a method named uh, make. So the first parameter which we need to pass here is the actual view. So I'm going to choose uh, binding dot root layout. So that's the root uh, layout of our uh, layout file, which is a constraint layout. And the second parameter is the actual uh, message. So I'm going to pass the message from the parameters of this function. And the third one is the actual uh, duration. So I'm going to pass a snack bar dot length short. And uh, after that, I need to call a set action method. So uh, snack bar uh, dot set action. And here I'm going to say just uh, OK. And uh, I'm going to show this uh, snack bar. So snack bar dot show. Okay, and I can rename this uh, variable uh, with the uppercase letter B. So press uh, Shift plus uh, F6 and uh, type a new name. So snack bar with a capital letter B. Press Enter. Okay, so that's perfect. And uh, now I can call this uh, show snack bar function uh, from our uh, on generate clicked. Okay, so here I'm going to call this function and I need to pass the actual message. And uh, I'm going to pass here a uh, field uh, empty. Okay. And now uh, this uh, on generate clicked function uh, should be called inside this uh, on click listener. All right. And now let's run our app and let's uh, test our code. Okay. So now uh, when our uh, plain text uh, edit text is empty and uh, when we press a generate button, uh, we should receive this uh, snack bar message that says uh, field empty. And uh, we are going to be able to switch to our success fragment only if we type uh, at least uh, one character inside. So for example, I'm going to type number one. And now when you click generate, uh, you should be able to uh, navigate to our success fragment. So now uh, it works uh, perfectly fine. Okay, so the next thing uh, I need to create the logic which will basically hash our plain text uh, using uh, some of the already specified algorithms. And for that, I'm going to create a view model. So let me create a new Kotlin class named uh, home uh, view model. So this class should extend the view model, of course. And inside I'm going to create uh, two functions. So the first function uh, will be named uh, get hash, and it will take uh, two parameters. The first one is a plain text of a type string. 
and the second one is the actual algorithm of a type string as well. And uh, this uh, function should return a string. So now I'm going to create a new variable named uh, bytes, and uh, now I'm going to use uh, one class named uh, message uh, digest. Okay, so this one. And now I'm going to call uh, get uh, instance. And here I need to pass the actual uh, algorithm which we're going to use. And the uh, algorithm will be passed uh, through the parameters of this function. So just type uh, algorithm. And uh, next let's call uh, one method named uh, digest. Okay, so this one. And inside the parameters of this function uh, we need to pass our uh, plain text. So plain text. But we need to convert this uh, plain text or this string to a byte array. So just type this uh, function uh, to uh, byte array. Okay. And here, as you can see, the message digest class provides uh, applications the functionality of a message digest algorithm, such as uh, SHA-1 or uh, SHA-256 and so on. So uh, message digests are uh, secure uh, one-way hash functions that uh, take uh, arbitrary size uh, data and output a fixed length uh, hash value. So uh, for example, a uh, SHA-256 will output a fixed value of uh, 64 characters, while uh, SHA-512 uh, will output a value of uh, 128 fixed. And uh, now I'm going to prove you that. So here I have one uh, web application for uh, generating hashes. So for example, I'm going to type here the name of my YouTube channel. And uh, here you will see uh, that uh, this uh, SHA-256 uh, will provide a value of a fixed size and the character size is uh, 64. So I'm going to show you that and now I'm going to copy this output and I'm going to paste that inside this uh, online uh, character count. And now you will see that the character count of uh, this uh, SHA-256 uh, is actually 64. And now I'm going to show you that for uh, SHA-512. So let's type here the same thing. So, so the name of my YouTube channel. And now let's copy the output of this uh, SHA-512 and let's check that out. So uh, now you will see that the, the output of this uh, SHA-512 has a character number of uh, 128. And of course we can check that for MD5 as well. So let's type the same thing. And here uh, the number of characters is actually 32. So as you can see right here. So basically, uh, no matter how long uh, text you paste here, uh, you will get the fixed value depending on uh, which uh, hash algorithm you choose. Okay, so that's it for now. And uh, now let's get back to Android Studio and let's uh, continue working on our uh, function. Okay, so uh, now basically we have used uh, this uh, message digest uh, class and uh, we have passed uh, the actual algorithm which we want to use and the actual plain text. So the actual result which we're going to get from this class is uh, in a format or uh, with a type of a byte array. So as you can see, the type of this uh, bytes variable is a byte array. So now uh, we need to convert this uh, byte array to a hexadecimal value. And for that, I'm going to create a new function down below. So the name of this function can be uh, to hex. And this function will take a byte array as a parameter and uh, it will return a string. So now uh, what we need to do, uh, we need to take this uh, byte array which we have generated with this uh, message address class. And uh, we need to loop uh, through each and every element inside this uh, byte array and we need to format each and every byte inside this uh, byte array so we can get a hexadecimal value. So uh, for that uh, we're not going to use uh, any for loop, instead we're going to use uh, one uh, useful function named uh, join to string. So here I'm going to just return uh, byte array dot uh, join to string and uh, here I'm going to type uh, this percentage symbol then uh, 0 2 and uh, lowercase letter x. And now on that I'm going to call a function named uh, format and I'm going to pass uh, this byte, okay? So this uh, format uh, will be applied to each and every byte inside this uh, byte array. And uh, now I'm going to show you the actual result uh, which we're going to get from this, uh, from this uh, join to string. So here I'm going to copy that and above that I'm going to just use a log.d. Here I'm going to pass a view model and here I'm going to pass uh, this function from down below. And of course uh, before I uh, actually start the application I need to call this uh, to hex function from our get hash function. So here I need to return to uh, hex and here I need to pass a byte array. So now uh, from our home fragment uh, I need to initialize this uh, home view model so I can actually call this uh, function and you can see the actual output. So uh, here on the top I'm going to create one uh, view model uh, variable so private 
Val home view model of a type of home view model and uh, here I'm going to use a delegate uh, named uh, view models okay so let's import that so android x dot fragment dot app dot view models okay so now I need to create uh, one more function so uh, here I'm going to create a new function named uh, get hash data and uh, this function uh, should return a string okay so inside first uh, I need to get the values from our uh, algorithm so the first thing which we need to do inside this function uh, we need to get the values from our plain text uh, edit text and from our autocomplete text view okay so first let's get the algorithm okay so let's use a binding dot uh, autocomplete text view dot uh, text to string and uh, down below let's create a new variable named uh, plain text so let's use a binding dot uh, plain text then a text and also let's convert that to string and uh, after that i'm going to return home view model dot uh, get hash and here i need to pass two values so the plain text and the actual algorithm and i'm going to call this uh, function uh, inside this uh, on generate clicked so i can call that uh, right here and uh, also we're going to observe our uh, log cat so i'm going to copy this uh, tag named uh, view model and uh, here let's observe that and let's run our app okay so let's type here for example uh, the name of my youtube channel okay and uh, when we click uh, generate uh, then uh, we should be able to see the result okay so now you can see that we have basically printed uh, each and every byte from our byte array and uh, those bytes uh, were converted to a hexadecimal value and uh, as you can see this is the actual array and uh, those bytes are uh, separated by default with this uh, comma and a blank space and uh, if we want to get the actual uh, hash from our plain text uh, then we should remove this uh, comma and this blank space so we can merge each and every byte from this byte array and uh, for that we need to just uh, specify here uh, inside this uh, join to string so here as you can see join to string accepts uh, separator and here for the separator uh, we are not going to add anything and that would mean that we're going to merge all our bytes into one single string so now let's run our app again and let's check it out okay so here i'm going to type the same name uh, from before so click generate and now you will see that uh, all those bytes uh, were merged and they are no longer separated okay so now that i have showed you that i need to explain uh, more about this uh, actual format which we have used so uh, here we have this uh, percentage symbol then a zero then number two and then this uh, lowercase letter x so uh, i'm not going to get into more details about uh, this uh, specific format instead uh, i'm going to show you one uh, website where you can read uh, more about uh, those actual values and uh, that website is called uh, java tpoint.com slash java forward slash string forward slash format and uh, here down below you can read more about uh, those actual values and their meaning so for example uh, as you can see uh, we have those uh, percentage symbols and different kind of letters and uh, in this case we're using this percentage symbol and this uh, lowercase letter x and that means that uh, this uh, x is taking integer as a value and it's outputting a hex string value okay and down below we can see some examples and uh, here in this example uh, number four and uh, as you can see here uh, we're using this specific format on this uh, number and the result is uh, 64 because from this number uh, we are getting a hexadecimal value and now uh, you might be wondering what's the purpose of those two first numbers so the first number is the actual uh, padding and i'm going to show you a little bit uh, later about that and the second number is the actual uh, width or the length so here we have specified number two and earlier you saw that uh, we have a byte array with uh, different values which contains uh, two characters and now i'm going to show you that as well so let me remove this uh, separator for just a moment so let's run this app again okay so let's uh, type here the same uh, name as before click uh, generate okay so here as you can see we have received a hexadecimal value from our bytes and each uh, hexadecimal value here uh, contains uh, two characters because uh, here we have specified that uh, each and every item inside this uh, byte array which uh, will be converted to a hexadecimal value should have a length of number two so now you can see that all those numbers or uh, all those elements inside this array have a uh, two values and uh, if we remove for example this uh, zero uh, from our uh, string right here let's see uh, what values uh, we're going to get so let's type here the same name click uh, generate 
Okay, so now uh, you will see that uh, most of uh, elements here from this uh, byte array uh, will have a length of two or uh, it will have uh, two characters, but as you can see some of them uh, will have only one. And that's why we are specifying this uh, zero padding, so we can actually concatenate a zero value in front of that uh, single value, so we can satisfy our uh, element uh, size or element length to number two. And uh, on this uh, website uh, you can see some uh, more examples, so you can get uh, familiar with this uh, format function. I'm not going to get uh, more deeper than that, so uh, be sure to check this uh, website on your own, and uh, if you have more questions uh, feel free to post down in the comments. So uh, now uh, at the end I'm going to remove this uh, log from here and uh, here I'm going to also uh, use a separator and the separator will be basically nothing because uh, in this example as you can see the default uh, separator is a comma and blank space but we are not going to use uh, any separator and that's why I have specified basically here just uh, two double quotes without uh, anything inside and uh, after that we should be able to see a full hexadecimal value of uh, our uh, plain text uh, converted uh, using uh, some of the algorithms which we have specified. And now whenever we type uh, anything here and click generate uh, we should be able to receive uh, the right value and uh, that value will have a fixed size uh, depending on which algorithm uh, you choose. So uh, in the next video we're going to focus on uh, sending that uh, hash value from our home fragment to our success fragment but we're not going to do that in this video and in this video I just want to do uh, one more small thing. So as you can see uh, when we get back from our success fragment to our home fragment uh, we should be able to delete this uh, text inside this plain text uh, edit text and uh, we're going to do that with this uh, option uh, on the top which says uh, clear. So now let's get back to our home fragment and uh, here I'm going to override uh, one function so on options item selected and here I want to say if item dot uh, item id is equal to r dot uh, id dot uh, menu or clear menu so basically when we press this uh, clear menu from the top uh, we want to clear our uh, plain text edit text. So now let's use uh, binding dot uh, plain text dot uh, dot uh, text dot uh, clear. Okay and uh, also we would want to display a simple snack bar message so let's use a show snack bar and here let's just type uh, cleared. Okay so here just return true and uh, down below return true as well. All right, so let's run our app again so we can see if that function uh, will work. Okay, so let's type here anything. Let's click here clear. And uh, this edit text was cleared and we have received this uh, snack bar message as well. So uh, that will be all for uh, this video. And uh, in the next video, we're going to focus on our uh, success fragment and we're going to send the data or the hashed value from our uh, home fragment to success fragment. And uh, we're going to display that same uh, value uh, in our success fragment. So uh, that's it for this video.